Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sally and this is Secret Life of Seamstress. I hope you're all well. So I'm here today to share with you a kind of fabric haul, sewing plans type video, um, like with my makes video last week because of the summer break. It is going to be a bit of a bumper one because I did pick up some new fabrics over the summer, um, a pattern and some knitting projects as well that I have to share with you today. So it could be quite a bumper one but I'll try and keep it short and to the point. So if you are new to my channel, I do post lots of sewing content, sometimes knitting content as well, but mainly sewing content, lots of um, sewing plans, sewing makes, sew alongs and things like that. Um, and I've posted quite a lot of sewing videos in the past, so do feel free to go back over my channel and have a look at my past videos. And if you are new, then I'd love you to consider subscribing. And if you do enjoy the video, please don't forget to give it a like at the end. And I'd love it if you leave me a comment as well. Just let me know what you think of what I shared today. And um, I'm always happy to answer any questions that you have as well about anything that I talk about today. So just before I get started, as always, I'll just share with you what I'm wearing today. Today, it's quite warm again in England. It's September and we're having quite a nice kind of late summer I'd say heat wave, but the heat wave's kind of passed now, but the weather is still quite nice and warm. So I feel like I'm trying to wear all of my dresses before the weather gets really chilly. So today I've chosen to wear my Davenport dress by Friday Pattern Company, which does actually have long sleeves. Um, so in the morning when we're kind of getting ready and walking to school and everything, it's still that weather where it's quite chilly in the morning. So I thought this one would be a good one to wear today. Um, so you've probably seen this dress if you've watched my previous videos, I have shown it before. I absolutely love the Davenport dress pattern. It's one of my absolute favourites. I've only made one so far, but you'll see later on in this video that I do have plans to make more. Um, and this one is made with a lovely art gallery rayon, which I actually got from Minerva. So I'll link that down below if you're interested in the fabric. And I'll just pop in a picture of the full dress just in case you'd like to see what it looks like on. So on to some lovely new fabrics that I bought over the summer holidays. So during the summer holidays, Minerva ran one of their craft club events. So if you're not already a craft club member with Minerva, it's a really good uh, thing to belong to, uh, in my opinion anyway. I shop quite a lot with Minerva, even though I'm one of their brand ambassadors and I do occasionally get gifted fabrics. They are one of my kind of go-to fabric shops as well. So I'm one of their craft club members and that just means that you get, um, so if you sign up, you get 10% off of all of your orders over a 12 month period. And um, twice a year, Minerva also run a craft club VIP day where you get 20% off of anything that you order on that day in a 24 hour period. So I have, um, I find this really good because I have a kind of wish list, if you like, on my Minerva site of the more expensive fabrics that I really like and really want to buy. And I kind of save them up and I know that these craft club days come twice a year and then when they come around uh, that's when I will buy my more expensive fabrics. So I had my eye on a few different fabrics um, with a couple of ideas of things that I wanted to make for autumn and winter time. Um, so these are what I brought in the Minerva Craft Club sale. It's really funny actually because I bought three or four knit fabrics and you'll see that completely unintentionally there's a, a, there's a real like colour theme going on here. So I've obviously got quite a colour palette in my mind of things that I want to make and wear for autumn and winter even though I didn't quite realise it at the time. <laughs> when I arrived I did kind of chuckle to myself at what I bought because they were all really similar colours. So the first one I bought was this lovely, um, it's called a Lima knit fabric and this is by Meat Milk and these fabrics are absolutely lovely. So this is, um, is if I hold it up to the camera you might be able to see the texture of the fabric but it looks as though it's been knitted so it's a jersey and it's got like a, a bit of a fluffy texture to it as well and um, this colorway is actually called warm sand and with this I want to make up the toaster sweater by Sew House 7. Um, I meant to bring the pattern down to show you actually but I've forgotten so I'll just pop in an image here so you can see what the toaster sweater looks like if you haven't seen it already so the toaster sweater was one of my Make 9 projects, which I haven't actually got around to yet. Um, I just haven't found quite the right fabric. Um, and I thought this would be a really lovely one to 
make up as the toaster sweater because it would just be really, really cozy. So I'm planning to make the higher necked version and I'm just hoping that that's gonna be okay for me because I've mentioned before that I don't like anything too tight around my neck, but I do really like the look of the toaster sweater from the pattern image. And I've seen quite a few people make up the toaster sweater online and on Instagram and it does look really lovely. And it looks really nice for autumn, winter, cozy kind of days. Uh, yeah, so that's what I'm planning to make with this one. It is really lovely and it's really, really wide. I think it's about 160 centimetres wide. So I brought, I think, about 1.7 metres of this uh, because that's what the toaster sweater advises for the size I'm going to make. And yeah, I think I'm going to have some fabric left over. So yeah, we'll see. But yeah, this one, it's one of the more pricey fabrics, I think. So I'm really glad that I managed to pick this one up in the sale and just get a little bit of a discount off of it. Next is another knit fabric and you'll see what I mean about the colourways of these. Um, this is called Old Rose or Rose I think. And this is a Mind the Maker slub jersey knit and it's got like a jacket pattern to it. If I hold it up to the camera, hopefully you can see the texture on that. It's really, really nice and it just provides a bit of interest I think to an otherwise kind of plain jersey but I didn't buy too much of this so I was kind of um, planning for things that didn't take too much fabric um, so with this I'm just going to make another simple Jarra sweatshirt or Yarra sweatshirt however you say it <laughs> by Megan Nielsen because that's my current go-to favourite sweatshirt pattern at the moment and with my autumn and winter makes um, I'm really trying to plan for things that I'm actually going to wear rather than just making lots of dresses that I might not wear so much um, yeah, so I really want to, I wear sweatshirts a lot in the winter, I like to be cosy. Um, so yeah, I'm planning some more kind of sweatshirts, sweater and jumper knits for the autumn and winter. This one's not going to be super cosy. It's not fleece backed or anything, so um, it's not going to be that warm. So I'd really like to get this made up quickly so that I can wear it in the autumn months where it's not going to be too cold. Um, but you know, it would just be the right kind of weight to get through the autumn in. And I think that's just a really nice color. It's my kind of color really. So yeah, that's what I'm planning for that one. Another Jarrah sweatshirt, a bit boring really, but that's, as I say, I just know that I'll get a lot of wear out of that. I will just mention that um, Mind the Maker jerseys, they're really good in that they have um, all of the colors of their jerseys and their knit fabrics. They also do in ribbing as well. So I very nearly bought the same colour in ribbing for this and I was going to do ribbing for the cuffs and the neckband and everything but again this fabric is so wide that I knew that I'd have lots left over if I used ribbing. I think I've just got a metre of this. So um, to save fabric and save myself a bit of money I'm just going to use the main fabric for the ribbing and the cuffs and the neckband and everything and hopefully that will work out okay. So that's that one. Next I have a couple of woven fabrics and you'll laugh again at this one because look at the colour of it. <laughs> so funny, I didn't even know in my own head what I was doing here but yeah. So yeah, another kind of beigey browny rose colour. This one's called maple but it is very similar to the other ones um, and this is a really lovely Dobby Viscose by Atelier Brunette. And I absolutely love Atelier Brunette fabrics, as you'll know if you've watched my channel in the past. <laughs> so um, yeah, I really love to buy these when I can get them at a discounted price because I know that they're just lovely quality. Um, and even though they are a bit more pricey, I think they're definitely worth it if you can pick them up. Um, so yeah, with this, I've just got a meter and I just wanted to make up a simple cami top with this that I can wear under my um, knitwear, so my handmade cardigans and things like that. Because I have to admit, um, I don't wear cardigans as much as I probably should do because I have knitted a few. Um, and that's mainly because I just need things to wear underneath them. So I thought if I can have a few more cami tops and just kind of simple little pretty tops to go under cardigans and maybe I'd wear my cardigans a little bit more. Fly in the room. <laughs> So yes, that's what I'm planning for this. And I was thinking um, with the Ogden cami that maybe I would try to put in a little frill around the neckline. And I'm not quite sure how I'll go about that yet, but if I can, and if I feel like I can be bothered, then I might put a frill around the neckline because I think that'll be really pretty. And that's a hack that I've wanted to try for a little while now. And I think it will look lovely in this fabric. And I should have quite a lot of this because again, Atelier Brunette fabrics come really wide. I think this is 140 centimeters wide. Um, so I should easily have enough to make an Ogden cami with a little frill. 
as well. So that's my plans for that one. Um, and that's the last of fabrics in this colourway, you'll be pleased to know. <laughs> the next fabric I picked up in the Craft Club sale was another Atelier Brunette, and this is my other colourway of choice at the moment, navy. <laughs> so this is another Atelier Brunette fabric. Actually, yeah, this fabric still does have the kind of taupe uh, beigey colour in it actually, so I'm still sticking to my theme. <laughs> um, but anyway, this is absolutely lovely. It's a viscose chalet from Atelier Brunette and I've had my eye on it for a while. I absolutely love it. Um, so yeah, I brought three metres of this. So I did buy quite a lot of this because um, what I'm planning to make with it is another Davenport dress, which is what I have on at the moment. But with this one, I want to lengthen it a bit down to midi length. So all I'm going to do to do that is just to simply lengthen the bottom frill of the Davenport pattern, just to make it kind of midi length so that I can wear it through the autumn with trainers and boots and things like that. And I think that'll be a really good, comfy autumn winter dress to have in my wardrobe. Um, and hopefully I'll get lots of wear out of that. So I mentioned in my previous video how I feel like my styles are changing a little bit this year and I just want to wear things that are comfy. So I'm really kind of attracted at the moment to kind of midi length things. Uh, so I just want to make a couple more wintry midi dresses up. So I think that this will be a perfect choice for the Davenport dress. It feels like a really lovely weight actually. It's got a lot of drape to it, but it feels as though it will be stable and quite easy to work with as well. So I'm hoping that's going to be a really nice sew. So I need to work my way up to that one because the Davenport is a bit of a beast <laughs> to cut out and to sew. It's, there's quite a lot of work in there, uh, but it is a really enjoyable make as well. If you've made it up, then you'll know what I mean because there's a few techniques in there like the burrito method. Uh, with this bodice and there's just lots of little details like the frills here and the neckline and everything. I absolutely love the pattern and I love how it comes together but it is a bit of a um, time consuming make I guess um, and, a, and for me anyway it takes quite a lot of thought as well so that's one that I'm going to really have to take my time with and put a lot of time aside so that I can get that done. So that's my plans for this one. And just one more fabric actually, which I only ordered a couple of days ago and I'm so pleased because it arrived this morning so I could include it in this video. And this is just another viscose which I picked up from Abacum Fabrics. They have some really lovely autumn viscose prints on their website at the moment and it was really hard to choose but I've stuck with my navy theme and I've gone for this one because I just love the colours in this. There's some orange and red and green and beige again, and I just really love the colours in this. I think it's gonna be so pretty. So I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna make with this yet. I have a few ideas in my mind. I'd really like another dress, another midi dress, that I can just wear casually with trainers and boots and things again. Um, not sure what pattern I'm gonna go for yet. Maybe a Lyra with longer sleeves. Um, maybe another Lyra hack with a different bodice, maybe the Darling Ranges dress that I said I was going to make as a midi dress. Um, not sure yet, so let me know in the comments what do you think I should make with this one. I absolutely love it. It's one of those that I don't really want to cut into because it's so pretty. <laughs> I really want to make the right thing with it, if you know what I mean. So yeah, let me know what you think I should do with this. I do have three metres of it, so quite a lot. So I think it should definitely be a longer dress of some sort, but I'm just not quite sure which pattern to go for yet. I should have said as always, I'll link everything down below that I'm talking about today, fabrics and patterns and everything, so that if you are interested in any of them, then you can pop over and have a look at them for yourself. So the next thing I brought over the summer holidays is actually a new sewing pattern, and this was a complete impulse buy. I think I saw this come up on the Guthrie Garney Facebook page, and I just really, really liked it. This is the newest pattern, I believe, by Chalk and Notch, um, and it's the Wren dress and blouse pattern. And I really just fell in love with the blouse on the pattern image, and I thought it was really pretty, and I really liked it and just wanted to buy it. And I did have some birthday money, so that was my justification for my impulse buy. <laughs> so I'll just show you the line drawings at the back so you can see. So it comes as a blouse and a dress pattern, so you can make either. Um, I think, first of all, I'm going to try this view A blouse pattern. I hope you can see that there. Um, so you can see that it has this really interesting detail to the sleeves. So the sleeves are actually in two parts. Um, and then the bottom part of the sleeve is actually kind of gathered um, into an elasticated cuff. Um, and it gives that sort of puffy uh, detail to the sleeves, which everyone really likes at the moment, don't they? Uh, so I think I really want to make up the short sleeve version in time 
well before it gets too cold so that I can maybe get some wear out of it during the autumn. So the good thing about this pattern is it comes in quite a range of sizes. It goes from a zero to a size 30 and it does come in um, two different bust sizes as well. So fabric suggestions are woven fabrics um, for the blouse and for the dress but for the dress I guess it would be better to use a drapier kind of viscose or something that's going to hang really nicely and this is quite a short um, drop waist dress which I really like the look of as well and I think um, I would really like to make this up actually for autumn and winter because I think that would actually look really nice as a short drop waist dress uh, with black tights and boots and things so I definitely want to make up the dress version of that for the winter as well I think that would be really nice. So yeah that's the chalk and notch wren pattern and um, I think I have the perfect fabric for this, which I'll show you now. I don't think I've actually shown this yet in a fabric haul video, because I think I bought these just before the summer. Um, so I didn't actually get around to filming a fabric haul video, including it or anything, but this is a really pretty seersucker cotton fabric that I got from Stoff and Still, and it is quite summery, although the colors in it are quite autumnal actually. I just feel like seersucker is more of a summery fabric, but hopefully this is gonna be suitable for both months but I really love the colours in this. Um, I found it really retro looking and I just kind of fell in love with it and had to buy it. Um, I've got about a metre and a half of this so that should easily be enough for this pattern. So I'm going to do the short sleeve pattern as per the pattern image on the front there and I'm going to use this fabric and I think, I hope, that will be a really lovely match. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. Do you think that'll work? I really want to get on with this quickly, as I say, because I'd really like to get some wear out of it before it gets too cold. So yeah, that's the chalk and notch wren pattern. It's actually the first chalk and notch pattern I've ever made, so it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. Just remembered actually that I do have another sewing project on the go, and this one's actually for my son. So, um, which is really nice because I don't actually make that much for him anymore, which is a shame. Um, but basically I'm making him a patchwork quilt. So I made him this patchwork quilt when he was about two. It's the first patchwork quilt that I ever made. Um, it's just a simple like um, 10 by 10 square pattern and I just sewed it all together and quilted it. Um, and as I say, it was the first patchwork quilt I ever made and it was kind of the start of my Poppy and Primrose business in a way because I ended up showing this to friends um, and they wanted me to make quilts for them and that's how it kind of spiralled so this quilt will always have a special place in my heart. <laughs> um, but yeah he's very much outgrown this now because I made it for him when he was about two um, and it's not a full size quilt. So I kept saying to him that I'd have to make him another quilt and then one day I was in Hobbycraft and came across some lovely Harry Potter material. So I've already got this cut up into squares actually, so I just have to kind of hold it up so that you can see the patterns. <laughs> so he's really into Harry Potter, um, so I thought I'd pick up these Harry Potter flat quarters for him and um, I would make him a bigger quilt. So he does know this is happening, but it's his birthday at the end of September. I'd really like to get it finished and done for him in time for his birthday at the end of the month. But whether or not that will happen now, I don't know. I don't know why I can't think of these things quicker. I'm so last minute with these things. I just think, oh, maybe I can get that done in time for his birthday and realise I've got about two weeks to do it in. So yeah, we'll see if that gets done or not. I hope it will get done. We'll see. So I've got all of these Harry Potter fat quarters. They're already cut up, as you can see. I'm just going to pad it out with some um, navy and grey and white fabrics um, because those are the colours of his bedroom and I hope that, that will turn out okay. Um, so yeah I'm just going to do it as a 10 by 10 square quilt again because I find that easier and then I'm just going to quilt it and bind it and uh, it shouldn't take me too long once I get going but uh, famous last words so we'll see if I get that done in time but I'll look forward to sharing that with you some point. <laughs> Next in things I brought over the summer, I actually bought myself two knitting kits from We Are Knitters. So I'm not generally a knitting kit kind of person, but um, over on Instagram, I think they were having a 30% off sale or something. And I thought, I'll oh, just have a look. I had a bit of birthday money again left over. I'll just have a look and see what kits they've got available. And I fell in love with two of their kits and that 30% off, um, it's quite a big discount really for their kits because they can be quite pricey again. So um, I bought two kits and the first one is the thread sweater. So I'll just pop in an image here of the thread sweater so that you can see it a bit better. because I've just realized that there isn't a very good picture um, on the kit that they've sent. But this is what it looks like uh, when they send it to you in the kit. So there's the thread sweater and it just includes everything that you need um, to make up this sweater. 
So um, you can actually opt in or out of having the needles sent to you, depending on whether you've already got them. This one is quite a thin, um, it's knit on quite a thin yarn. I didn't actually have um, a circular needle thin enough to knit this on, so I did actually have the needle included in this one. So I really love how the kits get sent out actually, they really inspire you to start knitting with them. So you get the instructions and a few other little bits sent in a lovely envelope like this. There's a big instruction book here which gives all the details of how to make up the sweater and that's, it looks really thick but there's actually quite a few different languages given in there. Um, so that's your instructions and this one's a really interesting knit actually because it's knit up um, as a t-shape so you knit the body of the jumper and then you cast on I guess the sleeves so that it eventually makes like a t um, style front and back and then you sew them together to make the sleeves so that's going to be interesting and I think I was maybe overestimating my knitting ability when I selected this kit because it does have quite an intricate lace detail to it and um, the skill level is described as intermediate. <laughs> so I hope that I'm gonna be able to manage it okay, but I thought it would be quite interesting. So I do like knitting a lace pattern. I find it quite interesting. Um, so I hope I'm gonna be able to pick it up okay. Uh, but yeah, it's really pretty, this jumper. And um, yeah, I really wanted to give it a go. It's quite summery, but I'm thinking that by the time I actually finish this jumper, it's probably gonna be spring or summer anyway. So. Hopefully um, it will be seasonally appropriate by the time I get around to actually wearing it. So in this little um, envelope here, you also get some stickers, which are really cute. <laughs> and then you get a little darning needle set to sew up your project and a little woven label that you can add to your garment when you've finished it. Um, so yeah, a really lovely kit. And this is the yarn, it's called the Finita yarn. It's really thin actually, so it's gonna be quite different from previous garments that I've knitted. But it feels really nice. It's kind of fluffy as well as being quite thin, so I think it's gonna be really nice to knit. Um, I thought this sweater came up quite short and quite cropped, so I actually added another ball of wool to my basket so that I could actually lengthen the jumper a little bit. Um, I don't want it to be too cropped because I know that will annoy me. So I'm gonna make it a little bit longer than I think the pattern suggests, just because I think that that will be more comfortable for me. And this is my lovely wooden knitting needle that I got included as well. Very, very thin. <laughs> so this project is gonna take me forever. It's gonna be a bit of a labor of love, I think, but I think if I can complete this, I'll be really proud of it. So that's the first kit I brought. The second kit I brought, basically I couldn't decide between these two and I thought because they had 30% off, I'd just buy them both. And that would be my knitting sorted for the next uh, 50 years, I think. <laughs> so I'm not the quickest knitter. But um, yeah, this one I really liked as well. This is called the Lighthouse Sweater. And um, this is just a simple stocking stitch jumper. Um, and I thought it looked really lovely. It's quite oversized as the model's wearing it there. So I'm not sure if mine's gonna turn out oversized like that or not, because I've gone for my actual size rather than um, making it oversized. So I won't show you everything that's included again. So you just get the envelope with the instructions and all those little bits, and then you get the yarn um, included, which you need to knit up the sweater. So this one has a lovely navy yarn, and then it has this um, quite a bit thinner, actually, um, yarn, which is fluffy, and it has a little bit of glitter to it as well. So it's called the Bling Bling yarn, because it's got that bit of sparkle to it, which I thought was really lovely. And it gives you that navy and white stripey finish to it. So that one's gonna be hopefully a little bit easier than the thread sweater. So I think that might be the one that I get on with first because if I do finish that one, I might get some wear out of it in the autumn or the winter. Might be being a bit ambitious there. We'll see, <laughs> we'll see how I go. I've actually finished my blue cardigan now. So I am at the stage where I can actually start something new, which is really exciting. So this is gonna be the one that I get on with first, I think. So I'll let you know how I get on with that. Okay, so I'll pop all the details of these um, kits in the description below the video. But if you are interested in buying your own We Are Knitters kit, I actually have a code for 10 pounds off of your first purchase with them. Um, and I'll leave that link down below. It is an affiliate code, so it just means that if anyone does use my code to sign up, then I earn a bit of commission that I can then put towards my next We Are Knitters project. Um, so yeah, I'll leave that code down below. If you are interested in buying a kit with them, then £10 off is quite a good deal, really, because as I say, their kits can be on the pricey side. Um, but I'm looking forward to giving these a go. These are my first We Are Knitters kits. I have bought a Wool and the Gang kit in the past, um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how this one turns out. 
So I just thought I'd finish with some reading chat and let you know a couple of books I read over the summer and I really enjoy. So if you're not really interested in the reading chat then feel free to skip past this bit. I know it's probably not for everyone but um, I really like hearing about books other people have read so I thought I'd share two that I've really enjoyed as well. So the first one was Black Rabbit Hall by Eve Chase and um, I actually got this for my birthday. My mum had read it and she thought I'd really enjoy it and I did. It's definitely a my kind of book. It's one of those books again which is set in now but then it delves back into the past um, to find out someone's family history. It's quite um, sad in places I suppose and it's got a bit of a kind of dark mystery to it which I really like. Um, but yeah I just it's also set in Cornwall as well which is one of my favourite places ever so I really enjoyed reading about um, the places in Cornwall and just imagining the scenery to the book and things like that. Um, yeah, it's an absolutely lovely book. So if you really like books like me that delve into the past but are also kind of set in the present, um, I think you'll really enjoy this too. It's hard to know what to say about the book without giving away the plot actually, so that's a little bit of an um, overview of the book. But if you do like historical fiction um, like me, then you'll definitely enjoy this one as well. So I'm looking forward to reading Eve Chase's other books because this is the first book of hers that I read actually. And I think she has written a couple more, so I'm definitely going to be looking in the library to see if I can find any more of her books and give them a read as well. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of her books and let me know which I should read next to. The second book I read was Richard Osman's um, The First E Murder Club. So this is a little bit of a different style book for me. It's not something that I necessarily normally read. Um, my husband actually got it for me from Tesco. They were doing a two for eight pound book deal and I'd asked him to pick up another book for me. And he got this one as well as part of the two for eight pound deal. So I gave it a read um, and I did really enjoy it actually. It's um, it's kind of funny in places and it's also quite moving. It's just about a group of pensioners um, at a retirement home that basically delve into murders um, and they end up solving an actual murder. And yeah, it's really, um, it's interesting and it's funny and it's quite moving. It makes you think about things as well. I have to say I did get a little bit lost towards the end of the book. Um, it got a bit confusing in terms of characters and I had to go over chapters a couple of times just to see where I was and what had happened. But uh, yeah, overall I did really enjoy this book and I think I'll probably give Richard Osman's second book that's coming out soon a read as well because yeah, it's just kind of a light-hearted easy read um, up to the end of the book anyway <laughs> um, yeah that I really enjoyed so if you've read that one as well let me know what you thought of it in the comments because I think it's had mixed reviews and mixed opinions so I'd love to know what you think if you've read it. So I think that brings me to the end of everything I have to share with you today. A few new fabrics, a new pattern and some plans for the upcoming months. I'm not quite sure when I'm going to get around to making these things but hopefully as I say I want to get them made up quite quickly because I really want to have them to wear over the next few months when it gets a bit cooler. Um, so I'll let you know my progress. I really want to film a sew along soon so if any of those garments interest you, if you'd like me to film any of them as a sew along then let me know in the comments and maybe I can do that as an upcoming video. Otherwise let me know what you're planning for autumn and winter, let me know any patterns that have caught your eye. Do let me know what you think I should do with that Abercrombie Fabrics lovely viscose, um, any patterns or anything that you think will suit that fabric then let me know in the comments below as well. Thank you so much for watching everyone, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you have enjoyed the video I'd love you to give it a like if you wouldn't mind doing so and um, as I say I'd love to hear from you in the comments as well. I'll be back next week with another video and I'll look forward to seeing you then. Have a lovely day, see you soon, bye!